Very excited. Uh, opening week's always a great time. For the past seven or eight months, all we've really done is played against ourselves. So I know the players are extremely excited to um, get to game day uh, as a reward for the time that they've put in. I think we're probably at a point now as a team that we need another opponent uh, to take the next step in terms of our development and expose things both positively and negatively. And uh, we're excited about that. Uh, very good job by our players uh, from day one on August 20th to prepare themselves. And um, it's just time to go. So we're, we're extremely excited about that. And um, I have a lot of faith in their character, uh, their toughness, and their commitment to doing what we want them to do has been very good out of this team. Some really good leadership from some of the older players and obviously some excitement you know, with the new players that we have. So ready to get off and rolling. How would you assess the readiness of your team for opening weekend, especially given that there are so many new guys on the squad? I think we made a, a massive jump in the past three weeks and getting uh, the rust of maybe the holiday break off of them, uh, getting to see live pitching four days a week for the past three weeks, um, you know, getting comfortable and settled in defensively uh, from the pitcher's mound. I feel a lot better about it than I did, you know, maybe three weeks ago, the first night of practice. It's, it's probably the best jump in terms of improvement I've seen in a, a team in the last, at least in the last couple of years. And so I feel good about it. And um, there's only one way to find out. You know, you never know until uh, the, the first pitch is thrown and you're in the middle of a tight game, in the middle of the game. But I think uh, they have the character to respond positively. And uh, we'll look forward to, to seeing that. Biggest area of growth you've seen in your team during preseason practice, uh, trying to get it back to the NCAA tournament this season? Yeah, I think uh, they've done a really good job, or it's we've evolved in terms of knowing the players better and, and where they can be set up to be successful. And that's something our coaching staff has always taken a lot of pride in, in terms of, you know, this guy fits well here. You know, let's get this player off to a good start here by doing this. So I think we just have a good handle on what our players are ready to accomplish now and how to utilize them. Now, we'll get a lot more answers, you know, five games into it. We'll have a lot more answers 10 games into it and 20 and, and so forth. And, and really the goal is to know them well enough to be able to have some success early and then figure out what your best team looks like as you're moving along and you can really improve throughout the season. I think uh, probably the thing I've been pleased with the most, like I said, is just the improvement um, and uh, the mindset. And some of that will be tested, you know, when the lights have, will come on. We've been a little bit ahead of that, even though it's a younger team, just from we got to play a couple fall games. And then uh, our uh, inter-squad deal uh, last Friday night with fans in the stands, the Meet the Team game was uh, awesome. Dress rehearsal where I think we got some some much needed butterflies out of the way. And I think that'll be really advantageous for us early in the season. Coach, have your goals changed over the last three weeks once you've gotten the guys on the field and started practice up until now? Not really. I, I, I think, um, you know, in this phase, you know, it's really tough for an 18 to 21 year old to just stay focused on improvement, stay focused on preparation. And, you know, I really believe that that is what elite athletes do. We, we couldn't win a game the last three weeks. And there wasn't that external motivation of, of what's coming forward. And they're human beings, and they're excited about Friday. But I think they've done a good job of staying focused on what that phase was. And it had a lot to do with closing the gap on, on what our potential could be. And, and we really, I think, raised the bar in, in terms of capability on that by having a really quality spring training if you would, would call it that. Uh, attitude, yeah, R really positive about the attitude. I think they believe in themselves at a high level. I think they look around and they see um, pl a lot of players that can do a lot of things. I mean, we actually have some really good internal competition that going on right now that'll still sort itself out as, as we play games. But I think there's a, a high level belief in themselves where I think that will help us as we hit adversity, which you're going to face in baseball probably more than any other sport. And I think they also respect what it takes to be successful. 
and we'll respond accordingly that way too. And uh, they, they understand the, the importance of every game, the urgency of each opportunity that they have, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that, that readiness. And you have to have it because the, the game is hard and we're, we'll play a good schedule again and um, really looking forward to, to seeing how they respond to that. And if, if what I've seen to this point continues to improve and transpire, I, I like where we're at in that regard. What are the positions where there's the most internal competition? Just yeah, um, we are uh, for the first time and probably in my life, which you'll appreciate this more than anybody in this room. We're going to lay out the, the rotation for this weekend. Um, Randy LeBeau will start on Friday. Uh, Andrew Nardi will start on Saturday in game one. Bryce Collins will start on Saturday in game two. And Quinn Flanagan, another freshman, will start on Sunday. And the reason I felt comfortable doing that is uh, the rest of the pitching staff. It actually had as much to do with those guys as it, it did with, with the starters. And I think there's enough mixing and matching and we can do on the back end. We've stretched some other guys' pitch count. So you have some guys that could start or extend behind them and, and enough left-right matchup type thing with some experience. You know, we're going to leave Avery Weems in the, in the bullpen, at least at the outset. Um, his stuff was really good out of the bullpen last year. And, you guys all know how I feel, especially this year, about being good in close games. Uh, Gil Luna uh, was one of our best relievers last year. We have him. So on the left side, you have those two guys. And then there's really like five or six right-handers that are all different and, and all contrast each other and will force teams to make a adjustment. So um, that's why we decided to roll out a rotation, which I'm sure you're happy about, Michael. Very happy. What, who is the primary guy you're looking at as a leadoff hitter, and what are the traits that you look for in a leadoff hitter? Good question. Um, one that I don't have final answer on. I would say if, if you're looking at, at candidates, uh, Matt Frazier has really taken a, a leap in his offensive game in terms of taking what I call professional at bats in regards to strike zone discipline. Uh, he's worked really hard with Coach Wanaka on uh, his swing and, it, and we've really revamped it from you know the time he got back from summer ball till now and uh, he's been awesome in terms of using his experience for leadership and so I really like where Matt's at right now. Jacob Blass had a great fall, uh, not a good fall, a great fall and you know he's really reliable you know he's a, he's a guy that I want a lot of our players to emulate you know not just in ability but how he goes about doing what he does there, it's certainly not limited to that. Those are the first couple guys that, that come to mind. You know, we've, we've done some unique things with the lineup in the past um, or unorthodox or non-dogmatic or whatever you want to call it. And so th it's not limited to those two guys, but those guys are the guys that come to mind right now. Um, it's sort of the luck of the draw, but you know, you face UCLA, Oregon State, and Stanford on the road this year. Those are kind of the consensus top three teams um, what do you think about the fact that you have to go to those places, and do you see a separation at all between those three and everyone else in the league? As, as most of the experts. Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, the 30 game. If I've developed respect for one thing, it's for every program, every player, every coach, every road venue in the Pac-12 in terms of difficulty uh, to win. I think when you look at those three teams, it's not so much where you play them, but you know some talent really stands out. And I think UCLA was the first one you mentioned, and they kind of have a core group that's played almost every pitch of every inning of every game for the past two years, and, and they're all back. Uh, Oregon State, you know, obviously the defending national champion, so they, they should play with confidence. I think uh, outside of Luke Heimlich, they have their entire pitching staff back, you know, as far as starters, bullpen, that type of thing. So that'll present some problems. and. and Stanford, I remember looking around the diamond last year going like, you know, these guys are going to be a handful, you know, a year from now and two years from now. And they had, I think, a 44 or 45 win season. So, you know, no brainer. But then you look around the league, it, it's not just exclusive to, to that. I mean, Oregon has two projected top 75 picks that are going to start on a weekend rotation. Arizona State, much like UCLA, has had a core group play together for, for two years. And I think they were one of the best offenses in the Pac-12 last year, um, you know, with Torkelson, her Bishop and those guys. And then, I mean, I could keep going. I mean, you know, USC has players all over these preseason lists and 
uh, Utah is always a, a tough opponent, and you know Washington State. You know we play them on the road. So if I left anybody out, I, I apologize. But you know, let's go. Game on. What, is, what does the leadership structure look like among players? A lot of guys went to the MLB, went into the system. Um, how have some of the younger guys stepped up to take some leadership roles on the team? Yeah, I think uh, that's been a real point of emphasis is developing that piece of the team. And, and we've kind of done it in two phases of, number one, everybody on the team can be a leader and defining leadership. And, and that has a lot to do with accountability and, and what, what is your vision for what you want your team to be uh, as a coach, as a player. And wherever you're short of that vision, you know, the player and the coach has taken accountability for that gap. And I think they've done a good job. Every player has done a good job of, of uh, doing that to this point. Now, that'll get tested, you know, because you know, you're going to lose game at some point. You're going to be in a tight game at some point. And then from there, not everybody can be a chief. You know, a few chiefs and some Indians. So we're going to uh, have some guys that I think Matt Frazier has really stood out. Jacob Blass, I mentioned. Randy LeBeau, uh, you know, developing himself back from an injury and the work that he had to put in to do that. Nick Quintana has been great. Uh, Cameron Cannon, it's been really fun to watch those guys evolve, you know, and, and come out of their shell personality-wise to hopefully be some of the, the chiefs on the team. Quintana and Cannon have received a lot of preseason accolades, All-America lists. Uh, Quintana's actually on the Golden Spikes preseason watch list. Do you treat those things the same as when the team you'll receive some sort of preseason accolades or is it different? Do you have to deal with the, talk to the players about kind of, you know, managing those yeah. things? Yeah, I, I think, and I feel like I've, I've said this kind of stuff before is those types of things, rankings, preseason awards, are just validation of a job well done of, of previous years. And, and certainly you mentioned Nick and Cameron are, are two of the best players in the country, particularly at their positions. And it's validation of that. Uh, they're both going to move on to professional baseball, I would assume, at the end of this year. And, you know, really with the older players, it's especially guys that have ability like those guys do and have experience. It's just try to get them to be the best version of themselves. They don't have to force anything or try to do too much. And they will tell you, and I'm sure they'll tell you today, that they believe that they have a good supporting cast to where they don't have to do that. And um, I trust them. I mean, they've both played a lot for the last two years um, you know they're two of the better players that we've recruited since we've been here they've lived up to what we thought they would be and and I think they're both in a really good place uh, going into this season for being what we all know them to be which is great players what about the Trevor Hoffman retirement on Friday night how big is that just such an icon yeah that dude's a superstar and uh, I mean very rarely do you get to be face to face with someone who is absolute the best in the world of all time at what they did. And you, okay, Mariano Rivera, Trevor Hoffman, Trevor Hoffman, Mariano Rivera. So that in itself is pretty awesome. I've got, I've known Trevor for several years. And the thing that stands out to me about him was how elite he was at preparation of his craft and how professional he was, how dialed into a, a, a great routine he was. And so that's a guy whose success was not accidental. And uh, the fact that he's associated with our program and the University of Arizona uh, is a big time honor. And we're excited to celebrate the retirement of his jersey. And um, you know, he'll get a chance to spend 15 minutes with the players on Friday. We actually practiced watching Trevor talk by watching his Hall of Fame speech last Friday as part of our game day simulation. And if you want some inspiration or uh, words that can help anybody in any walk of life, watch that speech. It's pretty cool. Any more questions for Coach? Well, um, the uh, UMass Lowell Riverhawks uh, picked third in the America East. Um, I guess they did pretty well last year within the conference, too. What, what's any sort of um, top-line thoughts on what they're going to bring to the table this weekend? Yeah, uh, I've made a concerted effort this year to focus on the development of our team and, and our players and our play. Uh, we have an outstanding coaching staff and we're all heavily involved in, in the scouting uh, part of this thing. And uh, we've definitely looked at them to this point. There is uh, an excitement, at least in terms of what you read about them, in terms of they've elevated the level of their recruiting. Uh, they have a really good pitcher on, on Sunday uh, that was the number one 
uh, freshmen in their conference th that'll pitch. Uh, one of their best uh, hitters is back. And then uh, they have two guys last year that threw really well out of the bullpen that started to start at the end of the year that we'll face on Friday and Saturday. So um, it's Division One college baseball at the beginning of the season. And so I expect a, a good challenge. And with our schedule for the rest of the way, um, you know, we don't expect it to be any different. So we're really looking forward to the weekend. How much time have you spent monitoring the weather forecast this week? <laughs> well, like 10 days ago, it said it was going to rain. And then five days ago, it said we were all clear. And I actually just looked at it on the way over here and it said it might rain Friday. So um, luckily, uh, we live in the best place in the country for college baseball. And we have a great tarp and we have a phenomenal grounds crew. And I knock on wood, hopefully it's not raining for 24 hours straight. And we just, we just need a window to be able to compete. So, What are you looking for most uh, in one for the first game? What do you want to see most from your team when they take the field? You know, I, I'm, I'm really excited that, you know, the game day is the reward for the preparation. And I think they're, they're like I said, they're like anybody else. They're really in, in tune with what they need to do to be successful and, and get a chance to get to watch them do that. And a lot of them, you know, you'll see this is their first first whack at Division One college baseball. And as much as I want to say it's just another game, and it's it's exciting, you know. I mean, you know, the, the couple of the uh, pitchers, I mean, two freshman pitchers are going to start this weekend. That's that's a great great thing for them. Uh, you know, George Arias, local boy. I mean, he'll be one of the first guys you see roll out of the pen. You know, have great faith in him and his maturity. You know, Austin Wells, uh, Ryan Holgate. You know, those guys. You know, we're planning on being everyday players and. So there's some excitement with that. I think I'm, I'm looking forward to see them display maturity to overcome their feelings and, and, and make the choice, so to speak, to be in their best character to, to execute what they need to do to be successful. How many uh, freshmen do you think will be in the lineup come Friday? Yeah, um, I feel good about like eight of the nine spots, at least initially how we roll it out. I, I don't expect the year to necessarily end the way that it starts. It never does. Um, but I mean, Austin and Ryan, you know, will be in there. Uh, Brandon Bossier will most likely be in there. Um, you know, Bryce Collins will start on Saturday. Quinn Flanagan will start on Sunday. Uh, so that's a lot in itself. And I think, you know, there's a really good energy around the team as you look f not just to this year, but future years. I mean, Tony Bullard has had a great three weeks. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna play. So Dayton Dooney is a, is a really good player. I mean, potential future superstar, he's gonna play a lot so uh, probably more than any year that I, I've been here um, those guys will impact the team and it's exciting to look forward and going you know you look at 20 and there's a lot of foundational pieces and 21 there's a lot of foundational pieces that are in our our program now you know we've kind of moved past that phase of just building the team one year at a time and uh, we had to do that and it was a very successful model for the first three years but I think this can you know kind of be a, a turning point into hopefully having it go the way we want it to go. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.